This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys, welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and we're back for another Citadel contrast painting tutorial. And this time we're going to be going to Warhammer 40,000 and Space Marines, specifically the 13th Legion, the Ultramarines. And we're going to show you how to get a quick and easily replicatable paint job if you're someone like me who doesn't particularly love the painting side of the hobby and wants to get a quick kill team or army out just in time for that ninth edition drop. So. To begin with then, we are going to start with something a little bit different to most Space Marine tutorials. Um, we're going to undercoat in Macrag Blue. I, I don't know why other tutorials start with like the Grey Seer or the Wraith Bone. I think a good tip for Space Marines is to avoid that blotching on the flat areas. Start with your base coat. So we're going to start in Macrag Blue and of course we're going to use that Ultramarine Blue contrast paint over the top to go over the entirety of the miniature's armor. And you're gonna to wanna to work this into all the nooks and crannies and making sure that it doesn't pull too heavily in each area. So just make sure you get good, thin coat over everything. Don't go too sloppy with it. Ignore the GW thick coat tagline. It definitely doesn't work. Just get a nice even coat as if you were applying a shade wash to the miniature. And that will give it lots of depth in the recesses and also give the color a little bit more vibrancy to match the armor that you often see in GW's publications. Then we're going to do some dry brushing. Now that this is going to be the most advanced techniques we really use. So dry brushing here, we'll start with a heavier dry brush and go to a lighter color. So we're going to use Alatoik, Alatok blue. Uh, over the armor to start with and this can go over all of the sharp edges of the armor as well as the flat plates So as you saw I was trying to get the majority of the paint off my relatively large dry brush that I'm using here for this one And just make sure that I get an even coverage on the high points and making sure I don't go too far into where the Shade or where the recesses of the armor is so just catching wherever the light would hit these flat plates And making sure I get a nice even coverage remember with dry brushing less is more It's better to put less on and then build it up rather than and going too heavy because it's harder to correct. So then we're going to go to Calgar Blue, we're going to go for a lighter dry brush here and we're going to focus more on the edges and the upper parts of the armour. So we're working our way from an even coverage of dry brushing to a slightly higher light focus dry brush. So the Calgar Blue is a really nice mid-tone for this and you can catch all of those raised areas, especially like around the shin guards and around the bottom kind of uh, flaps around the rear, I don't really know what to call that area, as well obviously as the shoulder pads and the backpack. Now finally, the other blue that we're going to use is Lothan Blue or Lothan Blue. I'm terrible with these names. And Lothan Blue is one that you want to make sure that is a very, very much lighter uh, dry brush because this is quite a sharp colour and you want to make sure that you only catch the areas that the light is really, really going to pinpoint on. So using a lighter set of strokes, making sure we've got more of the paint off the brush and just working ourselves round that way, ensuring that we make sure we get a nice even balance of what we are painting, as you can see, and trying to avoid too much of a powdered finish to go with it. So next up, we're gonna do the famed golden shoulder pads. So I'm gonna use Retributor Armor for this. Now Retributor Armor, it's a base paint. So I'm gonna use a slightly smaller brush to make sure that I get this nice and neatly on. I'm actually gonna use the side of my brush. So mainly through this tutorial, I'm gonna be using an Army Painter Regiment brush. This is a Kalinsky Masterclass. It's like the size of a character brush, which is a little bit smaller. And as you can see, I'm just getting the paint on the edge of the shoulder pads by using the side of my brush and working my way around. Now, as you go towards the backpack, you'll have to be very careful you might be worth bracing your hands to make sure you stay within the lines but if you make any mistakes you can easily correct it with one of the darker blue tones whether that's the crag blue or like cantor blue obviously we need to do the chest eagle so again be very careful as you're going around there if you get a bit of paint on the bolter it's not the end of the world because obviously we're going to paint that it's just the blue of the arm here that you want to make sure that you avoid because obviously it's going to be a little bit more tricky to correct. But Retributor Armor is a fantastic golden color. Reminds me of the old shining gold that you can get a lovely even tone with and it goes really nicely against that built up blue. So as for the rest of the metallics, of course, we're going to be using Lead Belch or any other silver color you really want to use. Lead Belch is really good because it just goes on nice and smoothly. So this will be aspects of the bolter, such as the gun barrel, such as the ammo magazine. And also there's lots of areas around the backpack and around the legs that need a little bit of detail. Ultramarines are, or Space Marines, these Primaris ones, they've got these little kind of ball bearings around their ankles, which look nice in metallics. Uh, they've got guns that tend to be holstered on the hips and you've got areas of the exhaust on their backpacks as you can see just going over there. 
Again, take your time, be neat with this, just to kind of thin out the paint if you can with a bit of water or flow improver, but don't go too heavy on it so it doesn't run anywhere away from you. And you can see the majority of the base parts of this miniature are all ready to go. So we're gonna start shading them. So we're gonna go back to our contrast paint for this. Uh, Gillum and Flesh is gonna be the one that we're gonna use for the gold. Now, if you don't have Gillum and Flesh, you could use Reichland Flesh Shade, I believe it used to be called, the shade one. Uh, Gidim and Flesh is one of those lesser known awesome shades that you can go over things like Balthazar and Retributor uh, gold colours and it gives a nice bit of depth without losing the kind of brightness. It's almost like a burnished gold finish. So we're going to go nice and carefully around the shoulder pads and the chest eagle. If you go a little bit into the shoulder pad it's not the end of the world because it will just tint the line in between the blue and the gold. Now as for the metallics, we're going to be using Nuln Oil just to sink into the recesses. This is a black wash, which will give us that kind of oily depth to the miniature. If you wanted to go a little bit more rusted or a little bit more battle damaged, you could go with uh, an Agrax Earthshade wash, which is the brown wash, or even an Athonian Camo Shade wash. If you were doing a slightly different chapter, let's say you're not doing Ultramarines, but you're doing something like uh, Dark Angels, that might fit your palette a little bit better. And yeah, even though this is an Ultramarines tutorial, you can take these basic tips and apply it to any Space Marine chapter. As long as you base coat in the general color it is, let's say Blood Angel, so you base coat in red, and then you can use one of the contrast red colors and you'll get a much, much smoother finish than if you were to try and paint these colors straight onto the Wraith Bone or the Grey Seer, which I think is something that is a mistake that's made in a lot of tutorials. Not that I'm a pro, it's just something I've kind of learned through practice. Now, an optional thing, let's say you've made an issue or an error with your highlighting and the blue does need a bit of tidying up, you can use Drakenoff Nightshade. Now this is a blue wash from Citadel. And it's also really good for just creating a bit more definition between the pads. Let's say your uh, blue contrast paint at the start hasn't quite sank into the recesses where you wanted it to, or you want a little bit more depth, you want that kind of cartoony pop, you can use Drakenoff Nightshade. And you can see me very carefully with a small brush just going around the edges of the shoulder trim. I go between the joints and around the knee area and the foot. And what this does, it just creates a bit more shadow and illusion of separation between these armor plates. And you can do as little as much as you can, but this is completely optional. As you can see, the effect isn't huge, but it's subtle enough to create that separation. Anyway, back to our contrast paints. Let's go to Black Templar, which is a fantastic well covering paint. This is gonna go over all of the undersuit areas that are poking out, such as around the hips and the elbow joints and the knees. It's also going to go on the bolter. Now, the bolt gun, is it a bolt gun anymore with Primaris bolt rifle maybe? Um, you're probably gonna want two coats just to get a nice even coverage over the top of that blue because obviously contrast paints let a little bit of the color underneath shine through. You don't particularly want that for the bolter, you want that to be a nice matte black. So I would suggest maybe two coats. For the rest of it, like the knee areas and the bits of the backpack, you can probably just get away with one coat. Black Templar goes on very smoothly and has really good coverage. It's only really that bolter that will probably need a little bit more depth. Now again, be very careful with Black Templar. Don't slop it on because again, if it goes over that blue that you've worked so hard to preserve or over the gold, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky uh, to fix. So again, a smaller brush might help you with this, anything from a regiment downwards from the Army Painter range. And you can see, really nice coverage. So we're gonna go back to Lead Belcher. I'm trying to keep the pool of paints as small as I can for this. Uh, this is gonna be used just to dry brush any of the metallic areas. So we can go over the gun and the casing. We can even go over the Black Templar we've done on the, the gun ever so slightly just to catch the bright edges. And we can also go over the silver areas and the golden areas that are elsewhere on the model. So specifically the shoulder pads. So I'm being very careful here just to only catch the edges of the shoulder guards and the edges of the chest eagle. Just to try and bring out a little bit more of that shine off that Gilliman kind of wash that's dulled it down. You can see it just picks up the edges where the light would naturally pick it up. But again, be very careful not to catch the blue. So with that done, now we're gonna put some base coating in for the rest of our contrast paints. You can use Grey Seer or Wraithbone for this, whichever your preference is. I'm gonna use Wraithbone just straight from the pot and this is gonna go on any purity seals and this is also gonna go on the holsters that are around these intercessors waist. It can also be used to dot in the eyes, but again, be very careful with that. Now for the majority of this, I did two coats. So for the holsters in particular, I did one coat, let it dry and did a second one because I want a nice smooth finish to make sure the contrast do exactly what they do, where they kind of stretch over and sink into the recesses. I don't want any blotchiness underneath because the contrast paints are somewhat translucent and I don't particularly want that color coming through because otherwise that blotchiness will come through. 
So just take your time, especially around those eyes, be nice and careful and just make sure you've got a nice even coverage. Any issues that you make here, you can kind of fix with the contrast because you can go slightly outside the lines and their depth will kind of shade the recesses, but just try and be in the as you can. So onto the purity seal and the eyes, I'm gonna use Flesh Terror's red. You could use Blood Angel's red. If anyone's watched my Skaven video where I painted that, I kind of exalted Flesh Terror's red. It's my much preferred red over uh, the Blood Angel's one. It's a little bit too bright for me. Uh, so this is gonna be for the eyes. This will give a nice glowing hint with the eyes uh, and also for the purity seal, which adds a bit of depth just to go in with that. And you can see our Space Marine is coming together. He's not too far away from being finished at this stage. So we're going to do those holsters and we're going to use snake bite leather for this. One thing about this paint I will say is make sure you go with a nice even coverage. Do not put it on too thick. Snake bite leather is one of those brown colors that if you put it on too heavy, it will go dark almost like black. And that is why I often tell people to ignore Citadel's one thick coat tagline because you'll get some really ugly coloration. So as you can see here, just a nice smooth coating just to get all areas and making sure I don't leave anything but trying to avoid massively uh, going over heavily because it leads to kind of paint strokes and you can see a little bit on the holster there which I'll fix in a second and just trying to make sure we get that brown tone so it doesn't go too black. Now, I did say there was a little bit of paint stroking on those holsters, gonna fix that immediately because we're gonna dirty them up a bit with some Gorthor Brown. Now, if you really want to dirty up the armor, you can start with Gorthor Brown or even Rhinox Hide to add a bit, but I'm just gonna specifically just go for the holsters here because I'll show you how to do some battle damage in a second. And after that, we're gonna do another dry brush using Screaming Skull. And this is pretty much going to go over the majority of the edges of the armor, as well as those holsters. And of course the purity seal to pick up a little bit more detail there. Now, one thing I would be very, very aware of for you is that when you are going over this, especially on the armor, less is definitely more. Just pick the very highest areas to catch. Do not go too much with this because you'll undo all that nice work you've done building up the blues and that is important for us to know. It can go on any of the black as well that is poking through just to give a bit of definition, especially like the bits on the backpack that have got kind of a ridged pattern. But just picking out the very highest areas and you can see just the very top of the shoulder pad, the very top edges of the knees and the head and the armor at the bottom. Now if you want to copy the basing that I've got here, it's just Astro Granite with an Agrax Earthshade Wash and then a dry brush of Dawnstone and Screaming Skull with the rim done with Steel Legion Drab. And you can see our finished Marine, here he is, all done. Now we've got one more thing that I can give you as an option, but you can see this is a relatively quick paint job, might take you about an hour or two, um, but if you're painting a batch of five or three in my case here, you can get them done in an afternoon, which is really nice. Realistically, you're just waiting for the paint to dry. That's the biggest focus. Uh, everything else is nice and straightforward. As long as you're neat and you're patient, brace your hands and make sure you're careful with it. You'll be able to get a really, really clean result with a really nice buildup of that kind of iconic blue armor that goes with the Ultramarines. Now I did say there's one other option. Let's say you wanted to dirty these guys up. These three Marines you can see here have had some scratches and battle damage added to their armor. And all I did with this was do a thin line of Rhinox Hide, which is a dark brown, and then a even thinner line of Celestra Grey to add that illusion of depth underneath it. And you can see little nicks and scratches. If you're trying this for the first time, pick a really inconspicuous part of the armor and build it up from there. And yeah, these guys have just had their transfers and a matte varnish put on. You can see really, really nice, clear finish. So hopefully that tutorial's been helpful for you. If you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. As always, I've been Tom from TNG Productions and I will see you in the next one. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content. It means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.